No. No, it couldn't be. Holy sh What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jay. Today, we're going to be taking this gorgeous Ibanez Prestige guitar that I just received here a couple of days ago, and I'm going to be turning these notes here into this demo track that I'm going to play for you right now. Now, stick around to the end of the song because afterwards, we're going to talk about the track itself, and we're going to talk about this guitar in detail. See you on the other side. So we are now in the logic session for this song, and I'm just going to walk you guys through some of the steps I took as far as music production choices. Uh, and for reference, all of the guitar tracks here, I'm utilizing Neural DSP plugins, uh, primarily Pliny X for most of it, I think. And uh, the song does begin with those intro notes that I just played for you there. And uh, but it's kind of an edge of gain, uh, excuse me, edge of breakup kind of tone, and I'm utilizing the uh, crunch amp. So here you go. Let's just play it out. So basically you're getting a sense of how I like to write music as far as how I structure songs. I like them to start out usually pretty basic and simple and kind of build up and climax at the end of the song. So the intro notes is very simple, very clean, not much going on. The drums kick in after a couple of bars, and then the uh, clean stuff gets a little more complex here. Um, you know, a little more interesting, I guess, musically. <laughs> Right? 
right? So you get a sense of what's going on there. Now here we uh, come in with the bass and with the first set of rhythm guitars, we're just calling them heavy rhythm. I mean, they're just, you know, a heavier gain tone. And, uh, but still have the cleans underlying, but I've dropped them down with the automation a little bit so they're not quite as prominent. And the heavy stuff kicks in right here. And then here, as you can see, I've added a second set of heavy tracks. This is basically quad tracking, but it's playing different stuff than the first set. So it's not really, I wouldn't really call it quad tracking, but you've got four guitar tracks going here simultaneously with the heavy stuff, as well as the clean stuff is still underlying. And uh, automation, I just dropped it down, I don't know, half a dB, a couple of dB, basically, so that the um, heavier tracks kind of stand out. So again, as I build up my songs, I kind of like to add a little more melody to it, a little more just melodic type of stuff going on. I'm not as, as much uh, concerned about just the heavy chugs. I want this to be a little more, I don't know what genre you want to call this, but um, some kind of metal, but it's more melodic, you know. Uh, it's just kind of what I gravitate towards more often than not. And in the second half of this rhythm section here in the middle, um, I differentiate the underlying, the secondary uh, guitar tracks are just doing like a fill sequence. Originally, this was just going to be double tracked, but I found that here in the, my original heavy tracks, um, I wanted to hold the notes and sustain them while these fill stuff is happening underneath it. So it ended up being four tracks for this part. And we're not done yet with this section. Uh, this is where the, what I'm calling the ambient fill, it's just basically more of a melodic lower gain lead tone kind of comes in and it's just a few notes. There's not much going on with it. In fact, I'll just play those notes separately for you first off. So you can just kind of hear uh, what that's all about. It's about as basic as it gets, but in by itself, it sounds kind of garbage, but <laughs> in the mix, it sits really nicely and just kind of fills it out a little bit more. So again, the idea of just, I'm still building the song up to more, 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 uh, more interesting, more melodic, a little more movement, you know, so to speak. So here's what the whole thing, whole mix sounds like. Okay, uh, I forgot to turn the cycle off. But now we're out of that rhythm section and we're kind of transitioning into the next little you know piece of the song. And so I'm still working with this clean section here, just the two guitars and the drums. Um, at the time of the filming of this video, I haven't completed the bass uh, track yet, so just kind of ignore that. You know, the full mix will be in the demo track, I'm sure. But as of the filming of this, it's not yet. So uh, clean guitars continue on here. I kind of just start doing some long sustained chords right here, but it sounds pretty cool. So check this out. So that couple of bars to me sounds kind of like a bridge, even though it's not really different than anything else. But uh, it's kind of, like I said, the movement is transitioning into the next section, which is going to be like an extended outro solo uh, section. And that um, those same clean guitars carry on down here. But the reason why I've got four track lanes of cleans is because the second set of tracks here of cleans is a little bit heavier. And I opted to use a little more uh, saturation. I'm using this cute little kitty cat here because I just downloaded this <laughs> uh, 
uh, free plugin, but it sounds really good. I just put a little bit of that on there and I boosted up, uh, gave it a little bit of a boosted high shelf just to be a little more present in the mix for this second section, but it's the same chords continuing on. It just sounds a little more pronounced. <laughs> Okay, now we have this lead down here, which obviously you can hear, uh, and by itself, it doesn't sound that phenomenal, but again, in the mix, it just sits really nicely. I'm using the lead channel here with the plenty amp, and I've got plenty of effects going on here. Well, I've got drive, compression, and of course, lots of reverb, delay, and chorus, because we want this, this track kind of gives me the 80s, 90s vibe, so I wanted the lead tone to be as lush and full as possible, so that's what's going on here. Let's listen to just the lead tone. Uh, by itself for a minute. So you get what's going on there. Uh, finally, this is like the, the end of the song here, the kind of the whole outro. And this is I'm just going to play everything here. I've added these two tracks, these two mid-gain tracks here, which essentially are um, just octaves, just extra added octave notes to kind of fill out what this clean stuff is doing with a little bit more gain in the background. So this is the end of the song, basically. <laughs> And as you can hear, the song is tapering off because I've added the stereo out track to the track lanes. Then you can apply automation to it if you didn't know that. And you can kind of make it do whatever you want, but I just have the volume fade out for the entire song. For, so all the tracks at the same time simultaneously are fading out. But then I also added a little extra to the drum track because it seemed to be uh, still too loud as the fade out was occurring. So that's got its own separate fade as well. Uh, just a little trick there if you didn't know that. And what else can I say about this, the end of this song? Basically, that's the climax, you know? So everything just kind of culminates to that moment where you've got this um, really lush, full, you know, sounding lead track, um, lead basically solo that's just kind of, that's the outro. That's the end of the song. And, you know, I changed up the drums a little bit at the end to make it a little more, more exciting. Um, it, it feels like the end of a song. I mean, that's what you want it to do, basically. So, you know, again, let's just listen to the fade out one more time. <laughs> And that's pretty much it for this song. Okay, so now let's talk about the guitar itself because this thing is inspiration personified. I love this thing, it's incredible. Ibanez Prestige, which of course is made in Japan, uh, part of their made in Japan line. This sits just above the premium line and just below their J Custom series, which is their actual cream of the crop, custom stuff like the Steve Vai signature models from the old days. This thing is incredible. Quality on this thing is Perfect. It's perfection. I love this thing. So what do we have here? This is obviously a nice modern rock shredder, metal shredder. Uh, I've got the two pickups, two humbuckers you've got there. This is a very typical set of pickups that Ibanez puts in their um, prestige line and a lot of their other guitars as well. It's your DiMarzio Tone Zone and Air Norton. Now the Air Norton looks a little bit different here. It's a single coil iteration. It's of their uh, humbucking pickup. It's still an Air Norton humbucker, just in a single coil 
uh, form factor there sits nicely and it's on an angle of course because they have 27 frets on this guitar completely unnecessary but a lot of fun those extra three frets is really cool and of course you've got Ibanez's uh, pr patented low pro edge tremolo which in my opinion is the best tremolo on the market it's absolutely killer works flawlessly stays in tune really well what I like a lot about this too is the arm just pops out it's so simple guys and when it gets loose there's little bushings there those two little white plastic bushings or whatever they're made out of, you can replace them very easily. It snaps into place, nice and tight and snug. It's not going anywhere, love it. Uh, this is an RGA, so it's part of their RG line, but the A stands for arch top, which of course this is, has a nice curvature to it on the, on the front. And it makes the guitar a lot lighter as well. So this guitar body is actually African mahogany, so you would expect it to be a little bit heavier, but because of that carve out, it kind of puts it on par with other guitars as far as weight goes. Um, the neck itself is maple and walnut, five piece neck there. And the uh, fretboard is the Makassar Ebony. Is that how you say it? Makassar, Makassar, I don't know. But it's Ebony fretboard and it is gorgeous. Offset inlays, mother of pearl inlays. Um, you've got, of course, lumen lace side dots. This thing is just a beast. This is, to me, this is perfection. These kind of guitars are just incredible. I had so much fun with this thing and I was so inspired to write a demo track that that's what came out of just holding this for a couple of minutes. I started to play those first few notes and I'm like, I've got something here. I got to get to the dough and start to put it down. Do you need 27 frets? No. Do I like it? Yes. It's absolutely cool. Killer. It's a lot of fun. You know, double locking trem. You've got your Goto um, non-locking tuners. You don't really need the locking tuners, but like Henning always says, Better to have locking tuners than not because it just makes your string changes that much quicker, guys. It's so much faster. If you haven't experienced it, you've got to get yourself a set of locking tuners on one of your guitars to see what the difference is. It's incredible. And if you're somebody who plays live and you only bring one guitar or a couple of guitars and you break a string and you just need to have that guitar for that tuning, it makes changing the strings uh, a lot quicker than when you have to wind it around a couple of times, lock it down, all that nonsense. So, you know, as far as that goes, Ibanez isn't going to change. They're going to make what they make because they're a top tier brand and they do what they do to perfection. And uh, I can't fault them for it, you know. But would I put tuners on this, locking tuners? Maybe, maybe. Uh, I would change nothing else about this guitar. It is just perfection. I mean, I like a lot of brands. I like a lot of uh, higher end brands. But as far as just all out build quality, all out, you know, aesthetics, that kind of thing, Ibanez for me all day long. It's my favorite. Um, and this guitar comes in two colors too. It comes in black and it also comes in white. And uh, I actually requested the black one, but I got the white one instead and that's okay. Everyone else demoed the black version like a year ago. And yes, it looks metal. It looks killer. I love that one too. This is more my vibe. I like colorful stuff. I like differentiation. I don't want everything I own to be black and dark. That's just not me, obviously. Uh, I like the metal stuff. I just don't need the black all the time. That's not my thing. So this definitely sets that apart. And both guitars come with gold hardware, so you're going to be the same pretty much on everything else except for the finish, black or white. It's your choice. So the official name of this guitar is the Ibanez Prestige RGA 622XH Prestige. There will be a quiz at the end of the video for that name. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so Ibanez, aside from the naming, aside from the fact that they don't put locking tuners on this particular model, not a big deal, right? Uh, this thing is a machine and a half, man. I love this thing. It's going to stick around with me for a while because it is just too much fun. And like I said, it inspired me to write that demo track. I just started out with a couple of notes. And I'm like, you know what? I got to get to my DAW, get this in right away because I feel a song coming on. And that's what transpired. That's what came out of it. So if you want the best of the best as far as modern shredder axes go, look no further than Ibanez. Uh, this guitar came out about a year ago, this particular model. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is still trending. This is still like, you know, to the forefront of what's new and what's happening in, in guitar these days. And uh, it's very elegant, right? It's not over the top. It's not crazy. It's just, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think because I'm out of adjectives. This thing is phenomenal. Uh, I've had a lot of fun checking it out for you guys. And um, that's pretty much it, man. So please, please, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You watch all my videos anyways. If you do, I really appreciate it. It means so much to the channel. I'll let you guys go. I'm out of here. Talk to you soon. See ya.